first came the earthquake, measuring nine on the Richter scale. Then a tsunami, washing over 10 metre high flood barriers, destroying towns and villages across northeastern Japan. Then a nuclear disaster, with major damage to four reactors at the Daiichi nuclear plant. It's one year later, and the toxic fallout from Fukushima is still being measured. And Japan, once the world's third largest user of nuclear power, is now facing an energy crisis, with most of its reactors closed for business. I'm Kathy Hearn. This week on 101 East, we ask if Japan can afford to do away with nuclear power. The scale of Japan's devastation from an earthquake and tsunami last March shocked the world. But it was the explosion at the Daiichi power plant that catapulted Japan's Fukushima province into a household name. And as radiation leaked into the atmosphere, health and safety fears gripped the nation. After the explosion, a 20-kilometer no-go zone was declared around the site, and more than 160,000 people were told to evacuate. Among them was Katsuhiko Hanoa, who lived with his family in the town of Akuma, seven kilometers away from the plant. We were full of confidence that we would be properly accommodated, so we left with nothing. For the last year, they have lived in this evacuation center. Katsuhiko used to install air conditioners for a living. He is now unemployed and works as a volunteer. It's been hard for the elderly as the weather is harsh and some people have died of heart attacks and illnesses. Although I think the real cause was the explosion. If it hadn't happened, they wouldn't have had to come here. The once bustling town is lined with deserted streets and destroyed buildings. Today, Katsuhiko and his partner Yukari have been given permission to visit their former home for the first time since the evacuation. The belief in safe nuclear plants is broken, and what happened can't be fixed. Millions of Japanese are now questioning if nuclear power is safe. The slow response by government to the crisis has shaken their faith in their leaders, but not necessarily in the technology itself. We can't afford to do away with nuclear energy, can we? Japan has very advanced technology that can make nuclear plants safe for future tsunami and earthquake disasters. Maybe we should do more renewable energy solutions like solar panels, but that's too expensive for most Japanese. We should spend money on making nuclear plants safer. Opposition politician Taro Kono disagrees. There's no future in the nuclear. So the question is not if, when we're going to move out of the nuclear completely. 
Kono has been campaigning for a nuclear-free Japan for over 15 years. I was probably the only one in LDP when LDP was in the ruling party. And uh, I mean, I was a maverick. But right after the March 11, everyone suddenly, you know, <laughs> came to talk to me. <laughs> Kono says Japan must embrace alternative energy sources and could be nuclear-free by 2050. It would be a dramatic shift for a country which from the 1960s built dozens of nuclear reactors to avoid relying on oil imports. A third of these are owned by Japan's largest power company, Tokyo Electric Power, known as TEPCO. The company has always maintained a close relationship with the Japanese government. But in its pursuit of profits, TEPCO has been accused of serious safety breaches and ongoing cover-ups. TEPCO and the government lost their credibility. They have been telling lies to the people. They've been trying to hide the information. And the Fukushima was a real serious accident. If they started to collect all the data, I think that would have been really good for future lessons for all human being. But uh, they, they have been neglecting collecting data, so we don't know what exactly happened, what kind of effect the radiation that came out of Fukushima have on the people. So uh, I, I think people are now not trusting any numbers that TEPCO and the government give out. Any government you know, faced with this kind of situation would uh, find it you know, challenging and difficult. Uh, but at the same time, I, I am uh, taking uh, the view that uh, uh, we could have done better in some respects, at least. And in some respects, you know, we, we did a good job. Anger at TEPCO increased when the company was slow to take responsibility for the disaster and slow to provide information in the midst of growing panic. To try and get some answers, I've come here to the headquarters of what must be the most unpopular company in Japan right now. I asked TEPCO if it could have been better prepared to prevent the accident. The cause of the incident is still under investigation, not only by TEPCO, but by the investigation committee formed by the government. The cause can only be known when the investigation is finished. TEPCO has received billions in loans from government, but has been criticized for delays with compensation claims. We received a lot of complaints from the victims that the application process is very complicated and we regret that has happened. We are trying to speed up the process. By the end of March, all of TEPCO's 17 reactors will be shut down, but TEPCO couldn't comment on its future plans. That will depend on the future energy policy. Our immediate priority is to maintain the stability of the Fukushima plant. We can't comment on future energy policy. And then I asked TEPCO if they still believed nuclear plants were safe. I can't comment on that in this current situation. I'm sorry. Across Japan, there is frustration and anger with the lack of answers. And protests like this one in Tokyo have been growing in numbers. From farmers' unions to school groups and trade unions, cross sections of society are represented here with one aim. Taro Yamamoto is a well known TV and film actor in Japan. In recent months, he's also become a vocal anti nuclear activist. I feel angry towards the government and I feel angry towards myself for not being aware of this until the disaster happened. I feel if we all feel this way, we can change things. But the truth is, proving the impact of radiation is very difficult. Taro says Japan's media, television and film industry is heavily sponsored by power companies and speaking out against nuclear power is damaging his career. But he says some things are more important than money. I believe all of you here are trying our level best to increase support, but we have to hurry up or else we'll be too late. If another big earthquake happens, 
it will be the end of this country. But we will not let this happen. We will not let the nuclear power plants be reopened. While Taro and increasing numbers of Japanese take to the street to protest nuclear power, one man's been on the ground monitoring the impact of the disaster since the beginning. Nuclear scientist Shinzo Kimura spent years researching the Chernobyl disaster. For the past 12 months, he's collected samples from across the devastated Fukushima region. Right after the disaster, I took samples from the soil, the plants, from snow, rivers and the air. I created a contamination map of the area and then used the map to help people evacuate. I also did medical checkups on those people who are staying in the area. Currently, we are monitoring the radiation exposure of more than a thousand people. This isn't Shinzo's first experience with nuclear disasters in Japan. In 1999, he was working for a government research agency when an accident happened at the Tokaimura uranium reprocessing facility, killing two workers. Shinzo says he and his colleagues were told to delay the start of their research to avoid causing panic. He believes valuable data was subsequently lost. So when he saw the flames at the Fukushima plant, he vowed not to let it happen again, even if it meant losing his job. When we went to start, we were told that until we received the green light from the Research Institute or from the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, we were not allowed to do any research. So I quit my job and I came to this contaminated area. The village of Sidamyo is 30 kilometers away from the Daiichi nuclear plant, so falls outside the no-go zone. But still, radiation levels are high. The area is quiet. Many families have moved away, concerned for the health of their children. Frozen cabbages have been left in the fields to gather evidence of soil contamination. There are fears that once the snow melts, more radiation will spread through the rivers and soil further away. My research results show that contamination has spread all over the country. For the villagers that stayed behind here, Shinzo is a hero. He's encouraged them not to rely on the government for answers and taught them ways to monitor the impact of radiation. I want people around the world and especially Japanese people to know that this doesn't only affect Fukushima. This issue is for everyone to think seriously about as it affects us all. Shinzo acknowledges there are no simple answers to what levels of radiation are safe. Last year, after news spread of contaminated beef, milk and vegetable products, 47 countries imposed restrictions on food imports from Japan. Fish shipments to China alone dropped 35 percent. And people across Japan are also questioning if food is safe. The government sometimes hide the numbers or give you the wrong numbers or give you the different numbers. So people are wondering what to trust. Um, we, we have a nine-year-old son. My wife asked me all the questions and honestly, I can't give her the answer that she's satisfied. Reports of contaminated food have created panic amongst consumers, hurting agricultural communities across Fukushima. Farmer Teruo Yasukawa and his son have spent the last few years building an organic farm in Minamisoma. They received notice of the official accreditation just one day before the explosion. Now the soil, tainted with invisible radioactive particles like cesium, is worthless. They were ordered to evacuate, but decided to stay, as they had nowhere else to go. I'm not going anywhere. I have cows to take care of. Without these cows, I don't have manure to fertilize my farm. Now the government tells me that we can't plant rice here. Without rice, I can't feed my cows. 
He says he has nothing left of the family business to leave to his son. Sometimes there are days we have no food on our table. The bad rumors have made the price of cattle drop to very low levels. It's not anger. I was never angry. It's frustration. I came to the point where I asked the government to kill me. It's better to be dead than alive these days. Cleaning up after a nuclear disaster is dirty and time-consuming work. Experts estimate it could take up to 30 years, and even then, no one is really sure how effective it will be. 101 East went into the no-go zone to see how the cleanup process was going. Essential equipment for this media tour includes radiation suits and face masks. We're seven kilometers from the Fukushima plant, and it feels like a ghost town. Although many homes have survived the earthquake, nothing escapes the invisible menace of radiation. As we get closer to the Daiichi nuclear plant, radiation levels continue to climb. Workers use high-pressure hoses to try and wash off excess radiation and strip the top level of soil. The soil is then wrapped in plastic and will be buried here until a suitable storage place is found. While the effects of radiation damage will take years to appear, the devastation caused by the earthquake and tsunami is all too visible. A month after the disasters, the Japanese cabinet approved almost $50 billion for reconstruction the country's biggest building project since the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs, adding to the woes of an already depressed economy. The emergency budget has been followed by more spending packages, but is still dwarfed by the overall cost of damage, estimated at more than $300 billion. All the empty land behind me used to be residential houses. The authorities have come and cleared up all the rubble, but they're not yet sure about rebuilding because of the possible threat of future tsunamis and earthquakes in the same area. Fear and uncertainty about Japan's future is paralyzing the country. Psychologists warn a crisis of doubt and depression could be more destabilizing than last year's disaster. The government is talking about the economic reconstruction, but for me, we first have to make people feel good again in their hearts and then ask them to start rebuilding their towns. Kenji Yamashiro was traveling in northern Japan when the earthquake struck. Shocked by the damage, he felt a duty to help. I honestly think that for those who can run away from here, it's better to run away. But for those people who can't go anywhere, it's very important to help them as much as possible. <laughs> In Minamasoma, many elderly residents in emergency housing don't have access to clean drinking water. Using his blog and website, Kenji appeals for donations of bottled water, which he then distributes daily. Today, he's visiting 85-year-old Mitsoko Hanai. She's grateful for the water and the company. After the disaster, people shut themselves in their homes. They don't go anywhere. They've become weak and stressed. There were people who died from depression. And there will be a lot more people dying from this. No one is tackling this problem. Kenji believes not all reconstruction efforts should be focused on economic issues. He teaches yoga classes to the local community, saying it helps survivors by giving them energy to cope with trauma and depression. For Japan, energy is something in short supply. All but two of its 54 nuclear reactors are currently shut down. And there's no certainty on when or if they'll reopen. If there is no nuclear power plant you know, being uh, restarting, uh, this summer is going to be you know, pretty tough. And uh, there, there's a, a government estimate, uh, which is you know, about 10% you know, gap. So, um, um, so that's a degree of uh, necessity, and uh, 
uh, how you, we are going to fill you know, th this 10% uh, gap uh, remains uh, somewhat you know, unresolved. You know, uh, uh, remains, uh, unresolved. The government faces a difficult balancing act, managing future energy security as well as the health and safety of its people. The country says it plans to rely less on nuclear power in the future. But at the same time, it's selling nuclear plant technology to countries like Vietnam, Jordan and South Korea. I think it's incredibly hypocritical. Um, I cannot believe uh, that the government is actually going ahead with these plans where there is this whole huge debate going on uh, domestically. So, I mean, I think that's really very, very much uh, an, a, indeed an atrocious thing to do. In the context of realizing uh, those uh, collaborations, uh, we would uh, make sure you know, that our technologies you know, being exported, our plants being exported would be safe. And, uh, and also we would share all the lessons you know, that we learn you know, from uh, this uh, nuclear power plant accident. For now, Japan is making up its electricity shortfall by importing fossil fuels. But experts believe a new long-term strategy is needed. We spent about 25 trillion yen to purchase the fossil fuel, which is 5% of GDP. It's, a, it's a quite a big. In the mid to long run, as China, India start growing their economy, those oil, natural gas, and coal price will go up. We, uh, we, we just can't rely on them in the long, long term. I think only alternative out is a renewal. Japan is one of the world's biggest spenders on research and development. But for such an inventive nation, critics say it has little to show for large-scale renewable energy solutions. What is re really needed, I think, is courage on the policymakers' part. Do you think that's there at the moment? No, um, is, I think, the simple answer. Um, politicians, policymakers, um, and of course not to, 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 to forget the power um, companies, are really so glued to the past, if you like, that they simply do not seem to be able to, to, to uh, see ahead. Power companies like TEPCO have been criticised for blocking renewable energy projects. So I think it is fair comment to say that uh, this sort of collaborative relationship between industry and the power companies have had a lot to do uh, with the way the whole um, energy policy in this country has been structured. The alternative energy in the Japanese energy mix is 1%. So that, that tells you a lot of things. And those who did try to change the system failed. Soon after last year's disaster, Prime Minister Nato Kan vowed to do away with Japan's reliance on nuclear energy and to put more money into renewables. But three months later, accused of mishandling the crisis, his party forced him to resign. And the new government of Yoshihiko Noda has carried on propping up the nuclear industry. There could be some you know, dissatisfaction or criticism that the government policies uh, are too little too late. Uh, but uh, what I'm talking about is after 3.11, uh, there is a, a renewed efforts uh, to deploy renewable energy. And uh, uh, so there are already uh, you know, some significant you know, new measures you know, being introduced. While Japan debates the merits of nuclear power, it's predicted another massive earthquake could strike the country within four years. Tokyo, a city of 13 million people, sits on a major fault line and is surrounded by other aging nuclear plants. As the government works to rebuild the country, rebuilding trust will be much harder.